friends! Here I am today hanging out at the Mr. Checkout office. It's rainy and stormy and thundering and lightning outside. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. Um, hopefully you're having bluer skies than I am today. If you hear the phones ringing, I've got my team on it, so it won't ring for too long. I want to say I hope that you are feeling healthy. You are taking whatever precautions you need to stay safe amid the um, coronavirus. I don't know how it is near you, wherever you may be located. Um, drop a comment below, let me know. I'm super curious to know where you're tuning in from. We here in Florida are um, kind of being hit from it all over. <laughs> so um, it's kind of a scary time to be honest. And we've seen some really big changes. So what I want to start off with is I'd like to ask you, what changes have you seen? Right? What have you noticed? Are you finding that people are answering the phones more often? Are you getting your uh, supplies in the same speed as they were before? Quicker, slower, same brand, same quality? Is everything the same? Right? Is your sell-through rate the same? Are you selling quicker? Are you selling things slower? Are people asking for different types of products from you? I've seen a big shift in products. We're still getting quite a bit of food health and beauty, some pet supplies, but we've seen a big drop off from CBD, which was so hot just a few months ago, to um, now, of course, we're getting a lot of PPE, right? We're getting a lot of face shields and a lot of masks and a lot of gloves and a lot of um, hand sanitizers, right? We're getting all sorts of things that six months ago, we almost never got, right? It's so different. I'd like to know how your business has been impacted, and I'd like to take it um, take the conversation today to talk about a growth strategy that you may have thought of or you may not have and um, kind of see how that might play into your business. So one of the trends that we've seen is big retail and the big box stores are getting hit really hard. Right? We know that TJ Maxx is closed for a couple of weeks. We know that some of the stores are operating at a limited capacity or offering limited hours, everything they can do to keep both their customers and their employees safe, right? Because at the end of the day, everybody should be safe. So, um, sorry, I don't mean to get political. I really don't. We can edit that out if we need to. Um, woo, let's start again. So what we've seen is that big box stores are offering limited hours. They're offering senior hours. They're offering limited capacity, right? Because they want to keep both their employees and their customers safe. So they've um, even offered limited items of certain goods. Or in some cases, I've seen signs where you can only buy a certain number of product, right? So you might only be able to buy one hand sanitizer or one roll of toilet paper when toilet paper was flying off the shelves. So I want to know how you've been impacted. What trends have you seen? We've seen that. And as a result of seeing that, uh, independent stores and convenience stores, um, traffic there, the business there has really been on the rise, which I don't know if you've considered actually getting into these stores or how to get into them or who gets the products into these stores specifically. But it's really interesting and it can make a huge um, impact on your business. Not only does it make a huge impact, but it could keep your business afloat if you're in big box stores and those are your primary drivers. Right? So let's say that you're in a big box store and your payment terms are 60 to 90 days, that's totally customary, and they lapse. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, where's my check? Well. Your check might be a little bit late, or maybe they need to return some product, and then you're on the hook for shipping to send it back to yourself. And you may not be able to afford it, or to afford it easily. So these independent stores, these corner stores, the convenience stores, these could really be the lifeblood of your business. And not only that, but they are for so many of the customers who buy your products, who buy all the products out there. So I wanna tell you a story. I used to live in Chicago, and um, when I lived in Chicago, I worked in inner city Chicago, I lived in inner city Chicago, my life was all about inner city Chicago for a little while, and um, one of the places I worked, 
very few people had cars. You didn't really need a car. It wasn't always safe to have a car, um, but you really didn't need a car because buses were everywhere. You could easily walk to a train station or take a bus to a train station. Parking was expensive. Cars really weren't necessary, which meant that if you were going to a grocery store, like a big box store, you'd have to either bring a little shopping cart or make limited trips because you'd be carrying your bags. So what most people did was they would go to the nearest store. And in some of these communities, they were considered food deserts, which meant that there weren't big box stores accessible or easily accessible to the residents there. So every day this guy John would leave for lunch and he'd come back with a bag from Walgreens. And we worked together and he'd leave and he'd come back and leave and come back. And after about a month of watching him, I looked at him and I said, John, what's the deal? Right? Why Walgreens? What are you doing? And he looked at me and he said, well, what are you doing for lunch? And I said, well, I bring it, right? I bring my little sandwich and my little bag of carrots and a little bag of grapes and a bottle of water. And I sit there and I eat my lunch. What are you doing? Why are you running out to Walgreens? And what are you doing? What is, what's going on? <laughs> and nothing against Walgreens. Walgreens is great for a number of reasons. But I just, I really didn't understand this. So he says, well, Walgreens is the closest thing around. I don't know if you've noticed. And in fact, I had not noticed. I was fortunate enough to not notice that Walgreens was, in fact, the closest place around. It was either Walgreens, or you could go a little further out and get to a McDonald's. And he opted for Walgreens. Well, fast forward a few years, that Walgreens is no longer there. It's been replaced by a few smaller shops, independent stores. It just, you know, their lease was up or didn't make it, or for whatever reason, Walgreens isn't there anymore. Right? So now though, it's those independent stores that service that entire community. And John isn't alone. He's not the only person running to Walgreens every day at lunchtime to get his food or running out to Walgreens in the morning to get eggs for breakfast or cereal, a box of cereal for breakfast or running out to Walgreens to grab a quick meal to heat up for dinner. Right? He's not the only person running to those independent stores, those C stores, those convenience stores to grab his breakfast, lunch, dinner, his pet food, a gift for his partner, some flowers for his mom, a little toy for his child, right? John isn't alone. He is one of hundreds, if not thousands of people in just in that community, just in that community. And these communities are not unusual. They're pockets of these communities across the country, which is why it's important to get your product into these independent stores in these communities so the people can buy them. So the question then becomes how you get your product there. Well, there's a few different ways, of course, right? Just like anything in life, there's a few different ways to accomplish this. One, you can actually go to the stores and you can kind of, um, like a door-to-door -door salesperson, you can go to each store, you can introduce yourself, you can pitch them your product, and you can go literally door-to-door-to-door-to-door-to-door -to, -door -to, -door -to, -door -to, -door to every single business pitch your product, see if they're, they'll be willing to carry it, even carry it on consignment, put it on their shelves, get some proven sales, right? And once you have some proven sales, it's much easier to then go to the next store and say, hey, this other store is carrying my product and it's doing great. We're selling 100 units a day, right? No problem. Once you have proven sales, you're good. But to get to that point, it takes some footwork. It really does. Now, once you're there, you may not want to go to every single little store across the country, right? You may not want to find them. You may not even have time to do that, even if you do want to. So what do you do? You find a distributor and you sell to the distributor. And these distributors, they're often wagon jobbers and they work, as you would think, out of their own, um, kind of like maybe they have a van or maybe they have a fleet of 50 or 100 vans or trucks, right? And some of them work out of their house. Some of them have a warehouse. It just depends on the scale of their business. But you sell directly to these distributors and then they get the products on the shelves. It's different than selling to a broker. It's completely different. So don't even go there yet, right? But you're selling to a network of, or you're selling to an individual of, um, excuse me, an individual distributor and they typically have a network of stores that they would then get your product into. Now, how do you find these distributors? Because they don't really advertise themselves. 
excuse me, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but they're not out there with an ad on Facebook or an ad on LinkedIn saying, hey, I'm a wagon jobber. Shoot me over your product, I'm happy to take a look, right? Well, Mr. Checkout has a, does a great job, of course. Right, of course, I'm gonna talk about Mr. Checkout because I'm hanging out in their office today. But there's also other companies where you can get access to their database, you can um, buy their list, and no problem, right? I believe Rep Research has a database you can use, uh, Buyers Direct has a list you can access, and then there's a number of other companies that are also out there. Um, but those are the two that I've heard the best reviews about, so those are the two that I could speak of. Um, and when you contact these distributors, you don't really want to sell them, hard sell them, right? You don't want to say, hey, you have to try my product, you've got to get it in your stores, it's amazing, it's the best. Don't, please, they're people, they don't want to be sold to, they just want to have a conversation. So you call them up, and they probably won't answer because they're busy. So you leave them a voicemail, follow up with an email, follow up with a text, right? Give them a few days, follow up again if you don't hear back. Give them some time, they're busy people just like you. They're just trying to make an honest living just like you, right? And just be friendly. Hi, my name's John, or hi, my name's Susan, and I've got this product I'd love to talk to you about getting into a few of your stores. I have XYZ sales. Um, these are the demographics that tend to love my product. It does great in these types of stores, this type of community. These are the, um, this is the category we're in, or these are the channels that we do best with. And you know what, you just have a conversation. And they might say, shoot me over a sample, or send me your paperwork, or they might just say, yeah, that's great. And the nice thing about working with these distributors, these independents, is that their terms are usually a little bit easier, looser, um, nicer, <laughs> than working with a huge big box broker. It's um, more in your favor often. And not always, but often. And uh, you don't have to have a huge order quantity. So if you want to test a new product, the independents are a great way to go. If you want to test a new part of the country, the independents are a great way to go. If you want to test or split test a different type of label, uh, different marketing, again, independents are a great way to go. Also, if you say, hey, you know what? We're really just kind of starting up and we don't have the ability to make five pallets for fulfillment, but we can certainly ship you two full boxes or five boxes, no problem. Great, talk to an independent. They're the people that you want. And it's their customers whose product your, whose lives your product will make the biggest difference in. So I suggest using independence for growth and also to help sustain your business when times get tough, when you're in a bigger box store, right? Also, the more independents that you work with, the more independent distributors that you work with, the more stores you're in. So if one of them stops ordering for a month, sales slow down, you have others that are still ordering. So you can keep a constant flow of orders, of cash coming in, <laughs> product going out, right? So it's a really nice way to keep your business rolling. And so with that, I hope that you are staying safe, I hope you are feeling healthy. I hope you're taking whatever precautions you need, you need to take um, to do so. I hope your team is doing the same, your family is doing well. Um, I wanna hear from you, so drop me a comment below. Let me know where you are, what you're doing to weather the storm, um, to get through this novel virus. I mean, there's so many, so many words that we've been using to talk about it. I, I feel like saying, be well, I hope you're doing well. It's kind of overplayed because um, of course I do. Obviously I do. So anyways, with that, I really do hope that you are, that you are kicking butt. <laughs> I really do. So let me know what you're doing. Let me know what trends you've seen. Let me know how we can support you. And I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.